Today's Thursday, November 27th, and this is News from the Frunk, Episode 9. Hey everyone, welcome to News from the Frunk. Sorry it's been so long since the last episode. Uh, quite a bit of news to catch up on today, but we'll try and make it short and sweet. Um, where should we start with? Gigafactory. Uh, Gigafactory been in the news quite a bit uh, this week. Um, the, uh, the Governor's Economic Office in Nevada has formally approved the $1.3 billion investment, so it looks like everything is green-lighted now to move forward. The construction is well underway. Uh, and I think I reported in the last episode that um, there should be initial production, I think, in 2017, uh, so only a, a couple of years out. Um, full production is going to be quite a bit later, uh, but I think the, the plan is to bring the factory online in stages and, uh, and get the batteries going as quickly as they can, because we know that's the biggest limiting factor on production today. Uh, in, uh, in other... Uh, Gigafactory news. There are stories um, been circulating for quite a long time that Tesla was playing one state off against another, um, and a lot of people were kind of running that down as though there was some Machiavellian um, master plan behind it. I think it was just a you know, prudent negotiation on Tesla's part. Uh, but Elon went to the blogs earlier this week and wrote up a story about the truth behind the incentives that they're getting from Nevada and what it really means to the uh, the people of Nevada in terms of tech, uh, tax and the real story behind how much Tesla is or isn't going to make out of this deal. Um, definitely worth reading and a link down below. A good story in Fortune this week by um, Peter Elkind. Uh, also worth a read, gives some of the background as to how that whole Gigafactory story played it out and again uncovers some of the truths and, and cuts through some of the rumours. So suggest you, uh, you go and check that out. Again, link down below. Um, what else? Ah, so if you recall, Tesla's master business plan is not simply to create a successful electric car company, it's to accelerate the entire industry moving towards electric cars. So news this week from uh, concerning both BMW and Audi. Uh, so Elon uh, did an interview with uh, Der Spiegel, uh, the magazine in Germany, and uh, suggested, hinted, discussed, uh, not in a lot of detail, but uh, talked about the fact that they had been talking, Tesla has been talking to BMW about potentially sharing some technology. Uh, I think from BMW's part, they may be interested in the battery technology and the, the entire system that uh, Tesla's put together. On Elon's part, he is interested in the lightweight carbon fiber reinforced body panels that BMW is using on the i3 and on the i8. You should know, or you may know, that the Tesla Model S um, is aluminum. Um, and that is uh, very lightweight, but also quite expensive and difficult to weld. Um, so it could be that in future models, potentially the Model 3, we may see a switch to um, uh, similar types of panels that we have on the uh, the i3 today. So watch this space. Also, uh, it was the, um, the Los Angeles Motor Show uh, at the weekend, and Audi announced a couple of things. One the uh, R8 e-tron, which is, I guess, is the competitor to the BMW i8, a two-seater. Uh, not sure whether it's a pure electric sports car or a hybrid sports car. Uh, Going to be very expensive, as the, um, the i8 is. But they've also hinted at a sedan, a fully electric sedan, in 2017, targeted very much at the Model S. Um, 200 plus miles of range, maybe as much as 300. No details, just rumors at this stage, or, or not so much rumors, just a statement of intent by Audi. Um, so, going to be interesting to see what that comes out, because clearly um, the Model S will be five years old by then, um, and be well established, uh, and I think we'll be looking at the next generation of technology. So it's going to be interesting to see what Audi can do uh, in that time frame. 
Uh, related to that a little bit, talking about the futures, Model X news, a letter was sent to Model X owners uh, roughly a week ago, uh, confirmed that the dual motor setup in the P85D Model S is the technology that will make its way into Model X. Um, and uh, there have been rumors circulating that uh, they were going to pull the Falcon wing doors and go back to a regular configuration. Elon squashed those rumors. He's fully committed to the Falcon wing. Uh, that's part of the reason why the Model X has been delayed. They want to get that technology right. He is still convinced that it's the right thing to do. Lots of unanswered questions on the forum about those Falcon wing doors. Uh, questions about what it means for the cargo carrying capability, because you can't put a roof rack on if you've got the Falcon wing doors. Uh, questions about what happens if it's raining or snowing and how much ingress will there be into the cabin. Uh, this stage we just got to wait and see. They do have uh, vehicles on the road testing. Um, nobody that I'm aware of has managed to snap pictures of any of the latest versions of that. So we're all waiting with bated breath uh, to see what, uh, what they finally come out with. Uh, and I think the last piece of news I've got today is um, about stock. So, oh no, actually, I've, I'm also going to talk about the uh, the superchargers. So we'll talk about stock first and then superchargers. So in stock news, uh, it's 10 days, <coughs> excuse me, 10 days since uh, I did the last episode, or actually more than that. Time flies, 20 days. Um, so in the two weeks between uh, the last episode on November 6th, and when I was going to record this on the uh, 20th, uh, the stock was almost level. It, it started out at uh, 241 and ended up at 242. Uh, but in between that, it had been up 7.5% and then back down 7.5%. So it's still very volatile. Um, that was mainly driven, I think, by um, uh, general investor confidence in the stock. But then Morgan Stanley came out. Uh, and cut the earnings forecast for both 2014 and 2015, which drove the share price back down again, but they have still held their target price at 320. Since then, the stock has risen back up, and yesterday, Wednesday, it closed at 248.44. So, uh, lastly, let's talk about superchargers. So, a lot going on in superchargers. I'm not going to uh, read all these details. I'll put them up on the screen and I'll, I'll give you the summary. Um, so in the last, uh, since November the 6th, when I did the last news from the front, um, we have got 22 superchargers have started construction uh, in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different countries. Um, we've got uh, seven superchargers have started the permitting process uh, including one down in Marathon in the Florida Keys, uh, south of me. So pretty soon you'll be able to go all the way from Key West, all the way certainly north of Boston. I'm not quite sure how far up uh, the East Coast you'll be able to get. Um, and 39 superchargers have opened. So we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different countries have opened superchargers in the last 20 days. Uh, including 10 here in the US, uh, 8 in Canada, um, and um, what have we got? 5 in Sweden, 3 in the UK, 4 in Norway, uh, 4 in Germany, and a smattering of other countries as well. So a grand total of 68 superchargers have entered construction, opened or started the permitting process just in the last 20 days. So uh, that's going crazy. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for this episode. Um, I said before I would try and do an, an episode in the next few days. I singularly failed to do that. I will try and do another episode this coming weekend. Um, fingers crossed. Good talking to you. As always, all the links to all the stories in the notes below. Would love to get your feedback and comments. If you've got any suggestions as to anything you'd like me to cover, uh, please drop me a note. Uh, I am going to do one about uh, winter driving. It's uh, 72 degrees here in Florida today. Um, so I don't have to worry too much about that, but I know it's uh, the weather's definitely biting in the north of the US and in Europe, uh, and a lot of questions keep coming up about 
uh, cold weather impact on batteries. So I'll probably I might even do a dedicated episode just on that to cover some of those things. Um, and uh, with that, that's we're done on news from the front episode nine. I will see you again soon. <laughs>